The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. Benjamin J. Heckendorn was a mild-mannered graphic artist until he was bitten by the electronics bug. Now, every week he takes on new projects, shares tips and tricks, and answers your viewer questions on The Ben Heck Show. Hello and welcome back to The Ben Heck Show. Today we're going to continue building a double-decker 3D printer. Last week we built the extruders and now we're going to build the X carriage that they slide back and forth on. Let's get started. But first, the news. Today in Ben News, I finally broke down and bought an air compressor. Now, some people use air compressors to run their tools, but I just like using them to blow air around and clean off parts and dust things. Hey, it's cheaper, I guess, eventually in the long run than these cans of air. But there's another good use for air compressors too. You may have seen episodes where the laser is cutting things and there's flames at the cutting point. Well, with the air compressor, you can pipe air into the back of this and it'll shoot out this little nozzle and keep those flames from flaring up. So the air compressor is another tool that makes our jobs easier. Last week, you saw us build the extruder, the thing that the plastic is squished out of. Now we're going to build the whole X carriage, the thing the extruder attaches to. You have your extruder here in the middle, and it has the rods it slides back and forth on. At the end of each of the rods is going to be an X carriage end cap. These end caps hold the rods in place. Now each end cap is a different purpose. This one has a stepper motor driver, which has a pulley here, which drives the belt that moves our extruder back and forth. On this end cap, we just have an idler pulley, which basically allows it to rotate. Also, each end cap has a captive hex nut embedded inside of it. What this does is it attaches to the threaded rod, which is the Z drive. When the Z motors rotate this rod, it causes the nut to be moved up and down. So these rods rotating cause the entire X carriage to move up and down. So this is what we're gonna to put together today. And of course it has two heads, not one. Now I'm going to use Adobe Illustrator to design the X carriage and then cut it out in the laser, at which point we can begin assembling it. Now I'm going to assemble the X ends of the carriage. It's better to cut a few things, try it out, and then cut a few things and try it out, rather than designing the whole thing at once because you won't find the errors until it's too late then. So I'm gonna show you how this works. There's two plates, these stack up like that. And we have the nut and that's what drives it on the Z axis. Then I have these little slotted pieces here. Come on, yeah, there we go. Happy little clouds. See? Then what happens is we're going to use these um, bushings. We'll put them in here. These would be really nice for the rods. There we go. Then finally, we're going to attach the X drive stepper motor here, and the pulley will be on the bottom. And then those will fall out. <laughs> And we need this to make sure the captive nut doesn't move. This is the nut that's going to have the Z drive on it. Okay, what I did here, I'm not sure if it'll work yet, but what I did here was I used a bigger pulley, so hopefully we can get more speed out of it. We'll see. Which means we'll have to manually calibrate it, but we've done it before, we can do it again. A 
man who is proud of his opposable thumbs, but now, ironically, he doesn't have a thumb in the Twilight Zone. Here's a limit switch. Hey, it's like an elevator. All right, here's the end of the wide carriage with the drive motor. Now I've slid the two extruders onto it. Now I've got a linkage here that puts the extruders at the right separation and also is going to bind them together so they move in tandem like this. See? So this is literally meant to print two objects the same at the same time. And I've got a spacer here which is going to show me the proper distance to mount the other side of the X carriage, which I'm going to do now. Ready? Here's the link spacer. Hmm, a little short. We want to make sure these two rods are cut to the same length. Uh, if they're not, they can be a little bit crooked and then this will not slide very well. It looks like it's moving pretty good. Who built two elevators in the same shaft? Here's the other 3D printed pulley. This one is just an idler pulley. It's just spins basically. I'm gonna put a washer in there. Here's the belt we attached. We had several problems. One, these extruders were designed before the wide carriage so they weren't in quite the right spot. Two, we had to make sure it was really tight here. Uh, we solved that by having some uh, teeth marks in the clamp, so the teeth of the belt cl clamp right into it. Next problem we had was with our pulley. Um, we used a printed pulley first that had the teeth on it, but that didn't quite work, so I replaced it with a uh, skate bearing and a uh, metric bolt going through it. And then I just uh, custom printed the pulley here. Uh, so now we have it working pretty good. Now we can test it. These donuts slow fat. Jim, can you unsend an email? Who's the new girl? What's wrong with business casual? Is Carl joining the call? Who keeps taking my sandwich? Do you think I'd make a good stuntman? Have you guys seen Carl this week? Did we get those bonuses yet? Will this software really work? How do you remove a virus? Getting straight answers to all your questions at work. Where is everybody? Not as easy as it should be. Getting answers to product and technical questions from a team of engineering experts, definitely easier. Discover how we're listening to your feedback and building a better experience. Oh, Carl doesn't work here anymore. So we had to make sure the belt was tight. We had some trouble clamping it here, but I ended up using some PETG plastic and there's little teeth made into the plastic so it fits right onto the belt. The problem with that though is you can't really adjust it. So this end of the loop over here, it has its own little clamp so it can be adjusted. Then the belt wasn't long enough because this printer is too big. So we actually had to make a coupling here and make it in such a way that it wouldn't hit these and it just barely won't. The coupling as well has the little um, teeth in it so it clamps right onto the belt. The last problem was the pulley down here. We used this originally, but it didn't work out that great. It uh, bound up and, and caused friction. So I just made this new pulley, which is free flowing, and I made it so a uh, skate bearing snaps into it and gives you your nice rotation, and then a metric bolt holds it into place. So yeah, let's test it out and see if it works. Here is our X carriage. It's pretty much all assembled. We have our two extruder heads here, and they're locked together with this linkage. We have our belt nice and tight and working. So the next step is to hook it up to the computer and see if it'll move back and forth. Again, we're gonna use Pronter Face along with this printer board. The printer board goes with the printer bot and it just works pretty good. I like it quite a bit. It's more convenient than ramps. Uh, we need to hook up the uh, temperature sensor to the nozzle. If it doesn't know what temperature the nozzle is, it won't even run or do anything. So you have to make sure you always have that hooked up. All right, so let's give this a shot. faster than that. Okay. The limit switch isn't hooked up yet, so I have to make sure I don't go past the limits. Okay, it's a little rough on that side. Let's try reducing the speed. Nope, not 25,000. 
Something else you can adjust are these little potentiometers on each one of the stepper drivers. You, usually you have them in the middle, which is you know normal current. But if your stepper seem like they need a little boost, you can increase the current by twisting it. In this case, twisting it clockwise. So if I put it too low, for instance, the steppers probably won't move at all. Yeah, hear it? It's not working. If I turn it up to about halfway, probably move. Yep. But they might not move at a higher speed, like 5,000, even though I don't think the machine ever runs that fast. Yeah, I hear it crunking out, so let's try increasing this power. Let's go to, uh, I don't know, about 80%. Yeah, it's still doing it. More power! Sorry, Captain, that's all I can give you. A note on gearing and pulleys. The printer board assumes this pulley, which has 10 teeth. For higher speed, I made this pulley with 24 teeth. So we have to take the number of steps for this and divide it by 2.4, the difference between these two pulleys. So the default number of steps per revolution is 63.36. So we divide that by 2.4. So we program in 26.4 steps. Here you can see, now we're moving back and forth 10 millimeters. So our calculations were correct. Now that the X carriage is put together and working, I'm going to explain a few of my design decisions. The two nozzles are distance apart so that there can be two heated platforms underneath it. So when this moves all the way to the right, this one goes all the way to the right of that one. And the space between them is enough that the two heated platforms won't be right next to each other so you can independently level them. There is only one limit switch because the machine only needs to know where zero is. It knows where the other extremity is because it knows the width of the heated platform, which is 200 millimeters. The nozzles are this distance apart so there can be two heated plates underneath it. So if, even if this one goes all the way to the right, it goes to the edge of this plate and this one goes to that plate. So there's a little bit more empty space here than there is here, but that's why there's two nozzles that distance apart. This end portion has insets here, so the frame can fit around it and guide it, keep it steady. So now we've shown me building the X carriage and also talking about why I designed it the way I did, to move these heavy extruders back and forth. In our next episode, we're going to work on the Z drive to lift this whole thing up and down, the Y drive to move the piece back and forth, and the frame to hold it all together. Then hopefully we'll be able to print out some stuff. My rave today is digital video technology. I'm old enough to remember video toaster, manual tape capture, and firewire, so I really appreciate modern solid-state cameras and their variable frame rates. For many years, video could only be shot at 30 frames per second, so it could never look like film, which runs at 24 frames per second. That's why a soap opera looks so cheap compared to, say, the X-Files. One's video, the other's film. But now most cameras can shoot 24 frames per second, finally giving a film look to small homebrew productions. Which brings me to my rant. Digital video finally looks like film, so why did they shoot The Hobbit digitally at 48 frames per second, which will make it look like video again? People could talk about blur reduction and strobing till they're blue in the face, like Avatar, but it won't change the fact that higher frame rates create a cheap video look. It's like the uncanny valley with animation. The more real it becomes, the more fake it appears. You can have my 24 frames per second when you pry it from my cold, dead camera. Today's viewer question is, with 3D printer software, what's the difference between Pronterface and Replicator G? Replicator G uses an HML file which contains specific machine parameters. Most common 3D printers, like a MakerBot or RepRap, have Replicator G profiles made for them, ready to use. Pronterface is more bare bones. You enter parameters manually, and most of the settings reside on the printer itself. For this reason, Pronterface is a better choice for custom printers like the one we're building. That's all the time we have for today. In our next episode, we'll build the Y-axis and the frame for the printer. Then we'll be able to show it printing two objects at once. We'll see you then. Stay tuned at element14.com forward slash TBHS where you can join the discussion, suggest builds for the show, and even have a chance to win upcoming builds. Remember, you can always email build ideas to benheck at element14.com. Thanks for watching.